there's so many ways to connect uh, the research that's done in space with what happens back here uh, on Earth. And we believe that what we do off the Earth, we do for the Earth. Talking about challenges, I have one video from International Space Station okay. I would like to show you. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, welcome to the International Space Station and welcome to the first tennis match in space. I'm here with my crew members, Ricky and Serena, and we're going to demonstrate tennis in space and we hope you enjoy it. This was very challenging. <laughs> was this an experiment too? No, that was a personal experiment. In fact, it was, uh, it was my wife's idea. Um, who, she's an avid tennis player and she thought, hey, nobody's ever really played tennis in space. Why don't we do this? So we actually teamed up with the USTA and, uh, uh, and they uh, helped provide those mini rackets and mini tennis balls. And uh, I created the court here in the Node 1 um, module of the ISS and we set up a tennis court and had a couple of weekends of tennis games but you know you can see that if you play tennis on earth it's really nothing like the way that we we had to play in space but it was still a lot of fun yeah this is amazing yeah. I can't really tell you who won or lost because I'm not sure we knew but uh, anyways it was fun trying here it looks that you won yeah I'm sure we won I mean <laughs> why not but uh, you know, we'd serve under the net, we'd serve over the net. We, you know, it's hard to have the ball to actually uh, stay in the service lines, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. We even had a match with the uh, all the crew members uh, had matches against each other to see who was uh, who was the most successful. And so tennis is pretty rarely played in space. I mean, we actually had a good time. I don't think anybody has since or before then set up a tennis uh, tennis match. But we do see astronauts occasionally like playing with soccer balls. Um, and I think badminton was up there for a little while. So astronauts look for ways to be creative and, and pass the time when, you know, on, on the weekends or times when they have free time. Yeah. How much free time do you have on mission like this? Uh, not very much, yeah. I mean, in, in 197 days, uh, six and a half months in space, we typically get a half a day off on Saturday and most of the day off on Sunday. How often were you able to take pictures of racetracks? Mm, that took the entire time while I was up there. I'm glad you asked. Really? That was, that was, my, that was my own personal project, was to try to uh, take photos of every MotoGP, F1, and IndyCar racetrack from space and to post the picture the weekend before the race. And I achieved that goal. I took my first picture um, two days after arriving on the space station and I took my last picture one day before leaving and that allowed me to get pictures of all the tracks from the season starting in March and ending in November. Even though I left in October I had to take pictures of those racetracks that I knew were going to happen uh, after I got back so I still had those pictures from space. I have to say that I was quite surprised because it's a very clear shot. Yeah, and I mean, it's a long ways away. What kind of camera can do this to take a picture of something which is 300 well, kilometers away and you, mm -hmm. when you are traveling, how fast? Uh, s s about 25,000 kilometers an hour. Wow. So pretty fast. Um, we only have a, I only have a few minutes to take that shot and you can't actually see the racetrack with your bare eyes. You have to be looking through the camera lens to find it. So I thought it would be an easy project, but it was actually quite hard because um, there's a lot of uh, orbital mechanics that are required and also cooperation with weather and uh, day-night cycles. All these things have to work for you to actually get that um, shot. Uh, this is a regular Nikon D5 camera with a 1600 millimeter lens, so about that long. And um, yeah, I mean, it was a great, fun project. and. It sounds like another mission <laughs> yeah. and not spending your it free time. It was like time. a mission on top of the other mission. Yeah, there was many, uh, m many times where I woke up at three or four in the morning just to go get a photo. Yeah. And you were also able to tweet the pictures. Yeah, I could from post those ISS. on social media from ISS. Yeah. So how is it communication with your family, friends? It's great. We can do uh, direct communication through email. Uh, we can do video conferencing now. Um, pretty much like being away on a vacation, you know, FaceTime type of applications that allow us to do real-time calls. Uh, it's all possible, yeah, which makes it nice. We can stream live television up to Space Station and watch sports events or races, yeah. And what was the funniest activity in Zero Gravity? 
What's the funniest activity in zero gravity? Hmm. In your opinion? Mostly the things that we do with water. I mean, water has, uh, liquids have a very unique qualities in space. They form balls or, uh, you know, bubbles in space and just float in front of you. So you can, you can drink water while it's floating in the middle of the space in front of you with a straw. That's kind of an interesting and unique thing that you really can't do on Earth. And what about eating birthday cake? Uh, yeah, birthday cake is a little bit overstated. Because you had a birthday well, during that time. I had a time. birthday, yep. And, uh, and yes, we had a wonderful birthday in space. Many people do. We had the hats and we made the cake and the cake went everywhere. Uh, <laughs> it made a lot of crumbs, but it was worth it. We still had a good time. And yeah. did you eat it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we oh. ate the cake. <laughs> it wasn't really what Catching you call birthday cake. It was like birthday cake, but yeah, we had a good time with it. I have one doubt about zero gravity. Mm -hmm. How can you rest when your body is floating all the time? That is an excellent question and a good segue for something else. So we, um, sleeping is hard in space. And uh, I mean, it's easy to fall asleep in space, but it's not always easy to stay asleep because without gravity, resting your body on a surface like your bed and pushing you down, it's, it be, can become a little bit uncomfortable um, to sleep. We typically hang ourselves in a sleeping bag. This is an image of the sleeping quarters on ISS, these four uh, modules here around the edges, and they're like small phone booths. Um, but inside there, you climb in a sleeping bag and attach yourself to the wall and you try to sleep. And so, as you say, everything's floating. And so your muscles, instead of relaxing with gravity and being forced onto the surface of the bed, They actually retain a neutral position, so they're neither in um, um, like tension or compression. So, and that's not very comfortable because you're used to having gravity make your muscles kind of relax and give in to the force of gravity. So, for the next space station that I'm helping build, which is the Vast Space Station, um, we created a sleep system that tries to simulate what that feels like to have a surface pushing against you, and it's a large um, sort of elastic blanket with an air-filled um, uh, bellow inside that you can, you know, uh, increase the pressure and to push you into the soft cushion of the bed. So, good question, and we, I think we found a solution, but we'll see, we'll see how it works out. But uh, back then you weren't prepared for this? No, not at all. So, I had good sleep months and bad sleep months. It kind of comes and goes, at least it did for me. Okay, I try to imagine, but it's uh, beha beyond my imagination. Yeah. What time do you follow when you are off the planet? Uh, we follow Greenwich Mean Time. So Greenwich Mean Time, which is basically London time. And the reason is because the space station is an international space station, so we have international uh, partners that help operate the spacecraft. So depending on when your ground control team is on, whether that's in Asia or Canada or Europe or the United States, everybody needs to operate it. At the ground control teams need to be able to operate at a time when it's the normal wake hours for them. And what that means is we picked a time that's kind of right in the middle for everybody, which allows, you know, North America to work and Europe to work, or, you know, at appropriate times without making everybody, um, you know, be awake all night or do the night shift uh, for their entire lives for six months. How many cycles of sunset and sunrises do you see when you are on International Space Station? Um, We go around the planet every 90 minutes, so in a day we see 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets a day. And that can ask, actually kind of be problematic for sleeping as well, because you no longer can operate with the function of day and night like we do on Earth. What experiences and feelings did you miss when you were living in space? Uh, I missed taking a shower and walking on the bottoms of my feet and, um, you know, being with family. I miss that. That's what you miss the most. In fact, one of the most unique aspects of being in space is when you come to the realization that you are, in this case, six humans that are separated from seven billion humans by the expanse of space, by the distance of 350 kilometers, and you're the only humans orbiting Earth at that time. You're the only humans that are separated from those other humans. 
and that gives you a feeling of separation from everybody you know and love and think about and your family is you know most important. Zaujal vás rozhovor a chcete slyšet víc? Jednoduché řešení. Staňte se našimi předplatiteli a puste si ho v plné délce na webu DVTV. A pokud to ještě neděláte, začněte nás odebírat. Žádná luxuska už vám neunikne.